going on from the last video where I said we'll go through, I've made a jig here, got some rolly sticks held in place with um, obviously drawing pins, got some other pins in here so I've just cleaned this piece and it just slides in all the way to the end then they're all at the same location I've cleaned this upper leg so I've got some flux here, I'll have a little bit on there and a little bit under there and again that just lays in behind the two pins right way up would help, there we go that just lays in there I'll then get the upright front leg my fiberglass brush, I'll clean that as well dip that in a bit of flux that slots in between these pins pushes home there we go and that just lays in there like that and then that leaves just the middle leg So a little bit of flux on each end. You can't have too much flux. Well, possibly you can, but not in this case. I'm going to say you can't have too much flux. So, gas soldering iron. Wait for a minute to get that hot. Now, it, now it's hot. We'll just place that on there. Warm this end up first. But it's getting there. There we go. The solder is flowed. Do this end of the leg. Solder's flowed. Just do this top again just to make sure. Definitely flow there now. Look, look at that lovely. And we shall take this off. Just like that. And this one, which I've already done, should be. So there we go, so we've got a pair, another four to go. And there we go, in no time at all, six bashing sets of buffer legs. All ready for cleaning and I'll just take them away and give them a good old clean up and then I can start cutting out the edges and sticking them on. Right, here we are several days later because I've been to work. We're now making the post oh. where were we before the postman interrupted right so these brackets they go on the top here about there somewhere we have some nice little angle brackets that go on the top here oh, too many fingers but you get the idea, they go on the top here that the beam of the buffer stops fits to so they come as a flat edge with a slot off one back and some bolt holes on the other side so because I'm reducing this to just two rails that go across on the buffers instead of three I'm having to uh, 
trim these down a bit so it's quite easy. I've got my caliper here which I have used to measure the from the point there to the top. Now that you just scribe a line on the back of the etch. That's nice and square, and in, and scribe a line, one scribed line, and you can actually see it, that's good. I've got a nice pair of chunky scissors, because it's not thick brass, and I just cut along the line like that, so nice and straight. Get my little hammer here and I just put it on the bench and tap it on both sides just to make sure it's flat. But I'm going to do it on the wood, not on the mat. So just one side just to make sure it's flat. So it's still flat. I then find my little pair of pliers. Line it up in the jaw with the line that's etched on the back, and then with my thumb, 90 degree bend, and that's it. There's my little 90 degree bracket. So, what I'm now going to do is secure these onto those. I've made a little jig here using a little block of wood, and uh, these are the upper brackets obviously and I'll just put some pins around them to hold them in place and I can just hook them out to take them out but they should all therefore slot straight back in the same spot. The object of the exercise is to get these little soldered brackets on at all in exactly the same spot so I can just slide it down till it's level with the bottom of the piece of wood and solder it in place and it should be exactly where I want it. So I'm going to remove that there for starters. I'm going to get my fiberglass pen and I'm just going to clean where I want to solder the brackets on. Then I'm going to heat up my solder iron and while that does that I'm then going to get my angle bracket and again clean the side that I'm going to solder in place so it's nice and clean. Somewhere here is my flux, and I'm not going to need much at all, just the tiniest little spot. Because it's resin cord flux as well, so I'm just going to tin this area here. Be hot enough for me. Want the smallest amount of solder. Just like that. Just to cover the surface. Again, the cleaned side. Tiny little smear of flux. And then hold that there. I'm going to use the soldering iron here just to bring it into place. It's not quite where I want it. Oh, that's 
glued that quickly. There we go. Job done. Two minutes left on the battery. Job done. So I have two brackets. Just give a gentle wiggle just to see. That's on there. And that's on there. And it's straight. And uh, but yeah, that works. So I'll do the rest, and then I'll catch up with you in a bit. Here we have the finished brackets for the buffer beams. Now, same as on here, we have a big head side, and just find one a small rivet side. So you need to match the big head side with the small head side. Uh, not this one. Ah, this one. Small head to small head. So all I got to do now is match up like that, so that the bolt holes sort of line up and bits and pieces, and glue it on, and then find its mate. That's uh, small head, uh, of course you can never find it as well, oh, it's the wrong way. I'm going to have to sort them into pairs, I think will be the easiest way. This one. And this one will go on this side. Sort of about there. And they will line up for your crossrail to go across. So we've now got the parts out from the ultrasonic cleaner and they're all looking rather nice. They've all nicely soldered on and basically all I've now got to do is glue these in place on here and job done. Now if you remember we have a small bolt sized and a large bolt and the large bolt is on the outside so what we have to do is pair these all up so that you have the relevant big one to go on this side because that's the big ones and the small one to go on this side but on the opposite peg you have the small one that goes on the back around there and the bigger one with the bigger ones to go on the front time to glue and there we have the front face ready for the beam to go across and the other side so I'll just carry on and complete all the others now we've got three pairs of buffer stops just ready for the cross rails to fit in but before I get this mounted on the layout, because that is where I'll fit the cross rails, I need to mount these parts on the track itself. Um, it also needs to be insulated from the track. These mount on the outside of the rails. Bolts bolted on, in real life bolted on. So I need to replicate that. Now I have separate chairs, individual A chairs on the track on the layout where I've made the pits. So I can just chop them off and secure these to the outside of the rail. So what I'm going to do, because you don't get a perfect fit and you don't have a perfect fit in real life either, I'm going to get a piece of styrene 
that will fit if I get it in the right spot that will fit down the web of the rail and then I can glue these to the outside of the rail with half a chair and then fit another half a chair that will also be insulated and when I put the rail across the top I will do exactly the same I will put a bit of plastic on the back just to hold it and insulate it slightly it won't be seen very well once it's painted, all painted up and everything is the same colour so that is the plan I've got some one and a half round styrene I decided to go for a round for a good reason and I shall explain as I trim these when I glue it in the channel in the web of the rail being round when I place it up against the rail that's already on the layout now if I got a slight discrepancy in the vertical plane in relation to these if I put flat rail on then it's going to stick up at an odd angle and would look odd however because I've got the round I can twist it slightly to take out any discrepancies and ensure that the vertical legs of the buffers are actually vertical and won't look silly but if I've got flat square styrene in here then it will only go flat and parallel to the base and then I might have a wonky upright leg it's not sticking to me so I opted for the round purely for that reason and I can demonstrate what I mean once this one is glued in there we go so they are all set now you got to make sure in this case that it is glued on the small dotted side the small head of the bolt side because that is what the instructions is they go on the inside by using the round I've got an element of twist if you can see it there I can, so I can ensure that I am nice and vertical when I glue it together using my square to make sure that all the buffers look right at the end of the track when you're looking down the shed Here we are on the layout. I've already fitted those two roads over there and we're going to fit the stops now that I have painted them and weathered them into their position. What I've had to do is remove the last five rail chairs and clean them off. First off with a screwdriver, have a good old scrape and then the fiberglass pen to try and give me as clean as bit of rail as possible considering I'd already weathered it and painted it and everything else so what are we going to do I have one for this side and I have the one for that side if you remember I had stuck the round styrene rod in the web of the rail and what that allows me to do is fit it like this and adjust for the vertical also it keeps these bits of metal away from the running rails so that when I fit the beams on I'm not going to be shorting out the two running lines so it's twofold but I will also add a bit of plastic on here just to make sure I've got some thin styrene sheet and so all I'm going to do is get my cocktail stick with some super super glue on I'm going to run a little piece wipe it up the 
plastic styrene rod. So it's just a little coating on both, on all of them, shall I say, rather than both. The first side is easy. I'm just going to line it up with the end of the rail, hold it in position, get my square, hold it round the back here. Make sure it's vertical and just leave it for a couple of minutes just to make sure. And just to make doubly sure, I'm just going to lean that on there to hold it against the square while that dries off. So, to make sure we're square, I have got this in place here, straight edge across the front faces of the buffer stops. Just line that up. With my little screwdriver I'm just going to score a little mark there so when I put the glue on I can have it in the right spot and then just adjust the vertical. So again a little bit of the super strength super glue on the plastic styrene here. Line it up with the mark, which I can't see now. Oh, there it is. There. Get the rail in position. Get the square. Just use it to hold that in place for a minute. And again, lean this on here to hold it up against the square. Job's a good one. So now we're done. Ta da! And they are vertical. But don't panic about this all being floppy because what I've got to do is get some of my chairs and replace the ones where I've cut them out. And that will then hold and secure the rail and also the bottom of the um, buffer stop. So I have my mech. I have my Pico IL702 chairs, which is what I'm going to use. Paintbrush for attaching the mech. And here we have some of the chairs. Um, I'm going to cut off one side. I'm going to use the side with the dummy wooden block. Now, I can't cut it in front of the camera because I can't see that well. So now I have half a chair so that I can see it. I'm then going to slide it under the rail. Hopefully if I can see I might have to go and get a screwdriver to assist. Yeah, I'm going to have to find assistance, just bear with me. There we go, just slip that under there. Slide the chair in. For some reason it doesn't want to go. Ah, that will be white. Right. The little leg sticking up. Carry on, snip these down and insert them. That's it, that's where I want them to go. I'll just get the mech.
and that will hold that in place. Now we have all the buffers legs mounted with all the rail chairs inside and out. I've painted the rails to match the bottom rails of the buffer stop bottom rails and toned it all in with a bit of weathering, touched in the weathering around here where the chairs were taken off because there was five before and now we only have four holding the buffer stops in place. I'm not going to fit the beams, the cross rails, whatever you want to call them today. I've got to file the rails down so they're ball head shaped the same as I had to do for all these legs. But what this means now, now that I have these built, roof, shed roof is next. Well there we have it guys, the buffer stops are in. This end of the shed's been in for ages. So what we've got to do next? Next is I've got to make something to temporarily fit to the front so from the next video onwards you cannot see inside the shed which is the view that I want to maintain. So what I'm tr going to try to do is structurally engineer the roof of this shed so that the, o the front of the shed can be open. That is so you can view in, that is the point of the entire video to look in the shed as if you're train spotting and walking around Hither Green. I have to assemble some very girders because I've extended the shed and changed the roof from when I originally made the girders. I need two more. So I've got all those ready to assemble on the bench. We have the roof trusses ready to go. Fingers crossed it works out and that will be in the next video. So all that is left for me to say now is enjoy your bottling and see you soon. Bye for now.